day by day, is the shizzle. What it do, what it is, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I am your host, Day Day, and today we have a great episode, uh, an educational episode, if you would, especially for those who are involved in entrepreneurship, investing, and looking to get involved in real estate. Um, You know, I believe that it is a great key and stepping stone to building wealth. I think more people are really realizing that, you know, by the day, day by day, trademark. So today what we're doing is we have a great episode involving a real estate investor, a very good friend of mine, my boy Daryl. We go way back like car seats and seat belts. I trust this dude, so I know he's going to kick nothing but the truth and not give no runaround um, when it comes to the real estate and game, real estate game. All right. So with no further ado, I would like to welcome my bro Daryl to the show. What it do, bro? Yes, sir, brother. Appreciate you for having me, man. You know, I've been trying to get on this on the day by day podcast for a minute, bro. I, I know, I know, man. Things have been a little bit slow, but it's better late than never. We here. Um, and listen, I don't I don't like to give the runaround. I like to get straight to it. I like to get straight to the draw. So I'm about to ask you. We're going straight into the water. Let's get it. When it comes to real estate investing, right? I think the average person would. Uh, you know, insinuate that you need a lot of money to buy a house and then flip it. That's the name of the mm-hmm. game that we think when it comes to real estate. You want to buy a three hundred thousand dollar house, you need at least like you know twenty to fifty thousand just to get your foot in the door with it. So right. let me ask you: with real estate, is it possible to get involved in the real estate game and invest in with little to no money down? One hundred percent, bro. Like we literally do this every single day. Um, there's a bunch of different strategies that we use where we're literally flipping contracts or actually buying houses and keeping them as rentals with zero to no money out of our pocket. That's the worlds. Um, Yes, sir. It's it's so many different ways. Uh, The first way that, you know, jumps to my mind, I'm sure that everybody has heard of is wholesale, right? Um, You know, wholesale you see on YouTube is essentially, I'm going to break it down real simple and and clean, right? Wholesaling, Mm -hmm. you find a distressed property owner, somebody who's going through something, whether it's, you know, a divorce, pre-foreclosure, um, whatever the case may be, vacant property, whatever the case may be, they're looking to sell this property fast and at a discount, right? So we're able to, to come in, negotiate with that seller, get them under contract, um, right? So let's just say the house is worth $200,000, mm-hmm. right? You want to get them at a deep enough discount to where you can make money and your end buyer can make money. Okay, so you get them under contract, houses worth 200000 you probably get them under contract for like $100,000. Okay? okay. You take that, that contract and you'll, what you do is you'll, it's called an assignment. So you're assigning the, the rights to buy the property mm-hmm. to somebody else, to an end buyer who actually has the cash, right? So you're just flipping the contract. Um, so let's just say you got that, that house on the contract for 100 you assign it to that end buyer. For mm-hmm. 110, maybe 120, and you make that difference. Now you just came up ten, twenty thousand dollars, no money out of your pocket. And I, I shouldn't say no money. I shouldn't say no money. I mean, you can most definitely, you know, get it without without money. But the name of the game is it's leads, right? And it's a numbers game. So the more leads and addresses you got, you know, the more chance of, of you getting a, a deal. You know. And and at the end of the day, I think you know anyone who's involved in investing realizes that. I mean, it takes some money to make money. Like you can't just, right. you know, snap your fingers and money pop up. It takes something, you know, right. it may not be, you know, as large as, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 or whatever, but it may take something. Um, right. So all in all, it sounds in a way like wholesaling uh, is not as much uh, house involved as it is contract involved, like you said. So it sounds like wholesale is more so like uh, you're a middleman. You're, you're essentially the middleman. You're, I like to call us deal founders, right? Because okay. people who are buying the houses, the cash buyers, mm-hmm. they don't got the time to go to go, you know, look for people who are actually selling their properties, you know, filter through prospects and, and get leads um, and find out who's actually selling their properties. Because you got to think we're calling on people, regular homeowners, right? If you own mm-hmm. your house, you're getting a ra- regular phone call, random out of the blue. Hey, was, would you be interested in selling your house? Right. right. Now, I don't do this. I have, you know, a team for me doing this now, but that, that's how it is, right? You're 
targeting a random homeowner and most cash buyers don't have the time to, to do this because they're in the field, you know, doing flips and, and all the stuff that comes with the business. And that actually answers one of my questions because I was going to ask what will stop the consumer from just going straight to the person, you know, and kind of cutting out the wholesaler. But like right. you said, they may not have time. They may be busy and you're coming to them, which may be yep. a little bit more reassuring, which yep. they're like, OK, you're pretty much doing the work for them. So they're like, OK, why not spend a couple of dollars to, you know, get the hard work exactly. done out the way. And what it is, you know, it's a it's a it's a game of relationships. Right. So life, life is like it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Absolutely. And so uh, a cash buyer, a smart cash buyer, I would say, isn't going to burn a relationship for five, ten thousand dollars when they can potentially make hundreds of thousand dollars if they do this wholesaler right and get all his deals. You know, right. um, so no, nobody's really going to uh, really going to go around you. You probably got to worry about like other wholesalers. That, that's about it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, uh, I've, I've been hearing wholesale a lot in the past two years, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but the about past year, especially wholesaling, yep. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we kind of talked about earlier how it's kind of becoming a little little oversaturated. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's like anything involving investment, you know, investing, you know, once the uh, once everyone gets involved, it might be a little bit too late by then. Just like a stock, you know, a hot stock. When everyone tries to get on AMC, when it's at seventy five, as soon as they join, it drops back down to you know fifty, whatever. That's just yeah, you know, I, how it goes. Yeah, that, I don't, I don't think uh, it's gonna ever be too late for wholesaling, right? And real estate in general, real estate ain't they ain't never making no more land, right? So what we're doing now is gonna be here forever until mm -hmm. until, house, until somebody doesn't need you know a roof over their head. Listen. Right? I, honestly, one of the reasons I moved out here to Charlotte is uh, before I moved out here, you know, I would come out here, take a couple of trips and I would ask, um, you know, the few people I knew that lived out here and they all said the same thing. Charlotte is building like crazy yep. houses, condos, apartments. It's just every day people are moving in. So every day they're building like crazy, which yep. kind of drew me here because, you know, next year I want to get involved in, you know, actually purchasing my first um investment property. So let me ask you this, when it comes to wholesaling and uh, real estate investing, is that the only way that someone can get involved with investing in real estate with little to no money down as wholesaling? Bro, wholesaling, I look at wholesaling as like the gateway drug, mm -hmm. right? It, it's easy to get into, you know, you, you don't really need to know the most to get into it, but you can make money. You can, you can, you know, you can have fun doing it. And once you just start learning about all these different aspects of the business, so many different, you know, opportunities come up to you, right? So I, I took the, I'm in this mentorship now where I learned about something called creative financing, right? And with creative finance, I'll just tell you a scenario, what we just did, right? Uh -huh. We just got a house in, in Baltimore, um, zero dollars down to the seller, right? Okay. The seller was, was asking for $20,000 over what the house was worth. Right. So already a wholesaler is out of the picture because they need to get the house, you know, 70, 50 percent of what it's worth. Mm -hmm. Right. So wholesaler is out of the picture. He's asking for twenty, twenty thousand dollars over what it's worth. I say, OK, we can come up to that price if you give us if you let us make you the bank and, you know, make payments on that price. Right. And you'll be surprised how many people are actually, you know, with that. Right. Because they're getting true passive income. Um so it's creative finance and you're ultimately you're making the seller the bank, right? Instead of you going to get a loan, you're creating terms, your own terms with that seller who's becoming the bank. Um, no, I'm, say, I'm, I'm sorry. You said it's called creative financing, this approach? Yeah, creative, creative financing is I like that. so many different ways. Yeah, what, what it is, bro, you can literally buy a house however you creatively think can, you can. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Like. <laughs> you, I'm telling you. Um, so there's so many different ways where where we actually another house in Baltimore we just closed on, but we took over a seller's mortgage. Right, he had bought a new house. Um, he's paying two mortgages for like three years, four years. Mm -hmm. Um, so like it was, it was catching up to him, and his sister was living there, and she wasn't paying no no rent or nothing. So it's hurting him financially, right? So he's like, I called him up, and he's like, man, just take the property. Like we tried to sell it. It didn't work. You know, I don't have any equity in it. I don't, you know, I'm going to have to end up making uh, coming out of pocket to sell this house. Right. Right. So we come in, we we said, OK, we you don't want anything. That's fine. But would you let us take over your mortgage? 
right? He already had an existing mortgage with, with uh, I think it was Bank of America or something like that. He had a mortgage with them. Mm -hmm. He kept that in place, took it over. His name's still on the mortgage, but um, we own the property. So it's kind of like subleasing an apartment? It's called subject to. Okay. Yeah. So you, you bought the house subject to the existing mortgage. Okay. And that, that's all under creative financing. Um, so pretty much there's so, so many different ways, man. You can buy a house with little to no money down. I didn't know that. So so he so he, he was pretty much like I'm in a hole with my mortgage. I don't want to, you know, uh, I'm have to end up coming out of pocket if I want to sell it. And if I want to keep the house, I'm going to be screwed over because I can't pay the mortgage. And it's going to mess my credit up, credit up and my life up. So instead, he just asked y'all to take over over the exactly. mortgage with no money down. Exactly. Okay. No money at all. Like all we, we did, all we're doing is taking over this, this apartment, this house. It's a four bedroom house. The payment is eleven hundred dollars a month. You can easily put a tenant in there for sixteen hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. seventeen hundred dollars a month, and to get even, yo, it the crate with what's so good about creative finance, like the difference between creative finance and wholesaling, right? Once you get a wholesale deal under contract, there's only one thing you can do with that, right? You can only sell it to somebody else. You can wholesale it to somebody else, right? When you have something, when you when you have a creative finance deal under contract. You have seven different exit strategies, bro. You can you can wholesale those terms. So mm -hmm. let's just say I negotiate ten thousand dollars down to the seller, five hundred dollars a month for ten years, right? Mm -hmm. I can sell those terms to somebody for like twenty thousand dollars up front, and somebody would do that because they just got a thirty thousand dollar house and he's got to make a five hundred dollar payment every single month, and I'm sure they can get a tenant in there, you know, for way more than five hundred dollars a month, right? And what we did right there, um, it's called a wrap, right? So you're wrapping your own term. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a wholesale. So that, that's wholesale one. That's the first one. Second one is you can wrap, right? You can wrap your own terms around uh, the terms you just created with the seller. So that same scenario, um, $10,000 down, $100,000 purchase price for 10 years, $500 a month, right? You'll turn around and sell this property to somebody else for $150,000, right? You'll charge them $20,000 down and then you'll charge them $700 a month, $800 a month and put your own interest on there. Now you became the bank. Mm -hmm. All for $0 out of pocket. Mm -hmm. Didn't even have to close on the deal. Truly is a numbers game. It's a numbers game, bro. And it's just it's, it's just knowing what you can do, right? It's just just getting that that knowledge and applying it. Right. And when I say it's a numbers game, bro, like because it all starts with the wholesale and it's all just lead generation. Right. So. What we're, what we're doing is we're just marketing it to as many people as we can to see if they're interested in selling or not. Right. And we can reverse engineer everything. Let's just say I want to make five hundred thousand dollars a month. Right. I can try. I can reverse engineer it to know how, exactly how many leads I need to get every single day mm -hmm. to make me five hundred dollars, hundred thousand dollars every single month. Right. right. And that's what I say when, when I mean it's a numbers game. So whoever's on the phone the longest, they're going to get the most deals. And if the vernacular is spectacular. So let me ask you this with um, you said, you know, you're calling every day around the clock, seeing uh, asking homeowners, are you looking to sell your house? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how the buyers or sellers market is the housing market is right now with what's going on. Would you say more people are looking to buy or sell or both right now with what's going on? And, and should someone take advantage of the moment? Right now, more mm -hmm. people are trying to buy. There's not enough houses on the market to buy. Okay. Right. See, that's, so, that's why I'm waiting until next year. <laughs> well, when you're investing, you know, this is the, it's always with, the cool thing about wholesaling and creative finance and you're always going to make money. Right. Because there's something that we do called driving for dollars. Right. Literally, they I don't understand. They say there's a there's a housing shortage, right? Yeah. But I guarantee you, if you next time you go outside and you just think about it and you just try to look for these ugly houses, you're gonna drive past 10, 15, 20 ugly, vacant, boarded up houses on your way to work, mm -hmm. you know, because it they're everywhere. I think naturally we're we're trained to look at the you know the nicest house on the block. Right. But now I, I try, I twisted my mind up and now all I see is ugly houses, bro. And I, I write those things down, come home. We call it skip tracing. Right. So what we do is we, we put their, their address in the computer 
Mm-hmm. I can pull up the phone number, the owner's name, the email address, mailing address for 14 cents. So like you can literally make money in this all the time, bro, because it's always going to be a, a distressed property in the neighborhood. Especially, okay, so now that makes sense. Yeah, uh, it's probably more buyers, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure, you know, not to wish unfortunate, not to wish unfortunate circumstances on anybody, but it's people out of work. You know, people that, you know, with what's going on might put them in a bind to where right. they may need the money now, you know, mm-hmm. and they'll they'll do with going into an apartment for, you know, however long, because, you know, the economy right now has them to the point where they're like, yeah, I have to sell my house. Just like earlier with the guy who called and said, listen, just take over my mortgage. I, you know, I got to get up out of here. Right. So I'm pretty sure that is, uh, yeah, causing a lot. But I like what you said as far as how we usually drive around and look for the nice houses for the for sale signs and whatnot. But, um, you know, we got to deprogram the reprogram to look for the, you yeah. know, the vacant, maybe not as nice houses um, mm-hmm. that's on the market for the for sale signs. I'm actually started doing that. I'm going to drive around. Um, that's where the money's at, bro. Yeah. Because like I said, it's a housing shortage, right? So who's mm-hmm. going to make the most money? I, there's a buddy of mine who just made $100,000 over what he was asking. He flipped the house. They asked, the, they they put it up for a certain number and they just bidded it up. He ended up making 100K over what, you know, he asked for. So it's, it's, the, best, it's the best time for like, if you're going to be fixing the flipping properties, it's the best time for you right now. Um, because- everybody's looking to buy it's not enough houses for for people not enough upgraded houses for people you know so and and on the flip side this is why creative financing is is so good because what's hurting wholesalers is sellers they're like oh it's a buyer's market i could charge whatever i want right i can ask for whatever i want so i'm going to ask for what it's worth when it's fixed up and somebody may or may not give it to me because you know we're in the hottest market ever Right. right and a lot of wholesalers can't do nothing with that. So that's when I come in with creative finance and I'm like, look, I have two options. We can either give you cash or creative finance, you know, um, cash returns. Right. So pick your choice. <laughs> like yeah. if you're going to sell to an investor, I can get you the highest price. Or if you want something fast and you want your money now, I can get you a lower price. But either way, we have we have a solution. Mm. And it, it really comes down to being educated on this let me ask you personally uh how did you come across this and you know what routes did you take to fully educate yourself on it to the point where you can make these moves with confidence right so honestly bro it i just started real estate back in october right i everything happened really really fast for me because i i put myself in a position where i had to do this or that's it you know so I'm 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 I'm, 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 I'm I'm gonna let you continue. I think that's just a a, a very important um uh component that every you know if you're listening to this if you're 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, whatever, I think it's important that all of us as adults put ourselves in a situation to where we jump in the deep end. Yep. You know what I mean? Just off of I mean, kind of just off of faith, but you know confidence in your faith as well putting it in god's hands but also making sure that you're able to you know walk the uh, take the steps god gonna be with you in spirit but you got to be able to take the steps i think that's very important you put yourself in this situation to where you had to succeed with this real estate which gave you no option but to do that but to fully educate yourself and be prepared to do it i think everyone needs to and should do that um me that when i when I, I feel like i did that uh i tell myself that all the time i kind of you know pat myself on the back just momentarily because I don't want to get too comfortable with moving out here to Charlotte. I just up and came out here. You know what I mean? And I, I, but I did it because I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. I could be back home where I know everybody. I know all the ins and outs. I'm comfortable every day of the week, every, but let me move to another state to where I have to be successful or else I'm a, or else I'm a, or else I'm a drown. (laughs) And exactly. I'm not ready. We we not built to drown. We not built exactly. like that. You know what bro, I'm saying? I'm a firm believer in that, bro. You gotta leave your city. You yeah. Got to leave your city, bro. Yeah. And, and able to grow. You know, I'm I'm from PA, bro. Mm-hmm. I've been. I go to PA to see my fam, and that's it. Like, right. 
no no chit chat, no chilling, none of that. You know, yeah. because I'm out here, I'm on a whole different type of time. Yeah, we're not walking down the steps in the three feet. We jumping straight into that 15 foot exactly. and just, you know what I'm saying, let, letting exactly. the rest, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Just what flowing me, from there. Right. What had me thinking like that, though, um, it's a book. And that's that's one thing. I got deep in the books, bro. I put down I put down the PlayStation. I put down the Netflix. I put down the Apple Music. Deleted all that shit, bro. I'm sorry. I didn't know if I could curse. No, nah, you good. You good. But yeah, um. Bro, when I drive, I'm listening to audiobooks and podcasts. When I'm chilling, I'm reading books, right? And one thing I got from, from this book, um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, one of, one of the best books out here if you want to, you know, really start learning about wealth and, and learning about what you can really do. Think and right? Grow Rich by Think Napoleon Hill. Yep. Think and Grow Rich. Um, one thing he says, he tells a story about, about a war general, right? I, f- I forget the exact name of, of the general that he used, but they were they were going to war, right? They were on their ships and they, they arrived on the beach, right? To, to start the war, to, to run up in there and, and get right. Uh-huh. He instructed the team to turn around and burn the ships. He literally burned their ships on fire. And he said, look, we're not leaving here unless we win or we die. You feel me? We're going to win this war, we're going to die. Some Straight real 300 up. shit. Exactly. We're not retreating. None of that. The only way off this island is victorious. You feel me? And that's that's just how I how I started just living. Right. I started locking in. I start if, it's, if I'm not learning something new. I'm sleeping or I'm doing something else. Right. Because it's all I'm trying to do is just learn real estate. So I took a cool month to just learn everything I could. Right. It took me three months to, to close my first deal. And a lot of people take them a lot, a lot longer. Right. It took me three months. I closed two deals. Actually, in three months, right? Um, <clears throat> had some shit going on where, uh, you know, had some some personal shit going on. I moved out of my crib. I was staying with my boy. I was staying with Malk. Malk, Malk and, and Charles staying on their living room floor, bro. Yeah, I remember when. Air mattress. Yeah. That junk. Air mattress had a hole in it. Put a tape on it every single night, bro. Was really struggling, right? Trying to close these deals. Just on the phone. Every single day, I'm like, yo, I can't, I gotta make this work. I'm at my job. I ended up getting fired because this all I'm doing at work is real estate, right? I'm sitting here on the computer texting sellers from my computer because I, I got this little app where I could just text sellers. Not mm-hmm. doing nothing on my job. Got got fired. Like my mom, my dad is like, oh, go get an appointment. No, I need to make this work, right? I'm not trying to go get no no free money. That might some people may look at that as stupid, but I'm not. I'm not with that, right? I'm feel just you. not. I like, feel I you. One hundred percent. 100%. I got to go get it. So, mind you, I, I closed my, my first two deals. And, bro, that was my first time touching, like, some, some real money. I'm not going to lie. Got out the hole, got got a crib, ran, blew, ran, ran through it, bro. Ran through it. was up 20 bands. Ran through it. That was like, your first, yeah, that was your first time touching it, you know. I'm touching some real money, bro. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm money. not even mad at it. Like, I was talking to one of my old heads, and he's like, bro, I'm glad you did that. You yeah. know, because now you know how to do it. Go do it again, right? You young, exactly. you don't. It don't really matter. I'm glad you did that. Got it out your system early. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm just thankful. And for at that. least it was 20 bands and not 20 mil. That's why kids <laughs> who inherit, you know, who inherit uh um what are those things called when their parents die and whatnot? Trust. trust. Yeah, when they inherit trust and get 20, yeah. 30, 40, 50 mil, they right. blow it. That's their right. first time being accountable for all that money. They don't know what to do with it, blow with it. You mm-hmm. younger age, 20 bands, okay, cool. For one, you know what it feels like, and for two, you know how to make it. Exactly. Yeah. And now, and number three, I know what it felt like when I when I lost it, so I ain't losing it again. You feel exactly. Me? <laughs> Yo. I'm not losing it again, but but bro, I and it, the the next thing I can say, your know, books, and then invest in yourself, right? I paid out that twenty thousand. I ain't just blow it all on no stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. I paid eight thousand dollars for a mentorship, bro. For yeah. a life, lifelong mentorship that taught me all this creative finance and then all this other stuff, right? Because without it, I, I would still be basically in the same position as I was back in January, right? And this is all back in January, February, when I'm when I'm chilling with Malcolm and all that at his crib, um, and all this is happening. So and yeah, people bro, need to realize <laughs> that when, when you said you spent the eight thousand on a mentorship. How important that is, because, you know, we uh, a lot of people would be, oh, why well, spend that money, much money on that when I could just spend it on the product? Um, nah, <laughs> the the I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't read a full book from front to back ever in my whole life until last year. 
The very first time I read a book by myself, not my teacher reading it to me. Very first time I read a book to myself front to back was Rich Dad, Poor Dad by um, Robert K, whatever his last exactly. name is. Yeah. And he was saying how he spent, um, I think it was like 10 to 15,000 thousand in total. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where am I at? Uh, my, I'm right there. Hold on. Hold on. What you doing, man, baby? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because we, le- we legit over here, man. You know what I'm saying? The f- yes, this is sir. the first book I read from front Me to too. back. Me like, too. I mean, from the very first chapter, I was so intrigued because I'm like, damn, he is literally talking my language. Like, right. I just have always done it on a, you know, broader scale my whole life. But he, he spoke on, you know, how he spent so much money on seminars and mentorships. And it was bands, just like you, you know, close to double digit uh, figure bands. And he was saying that that's some of the most important money he's ever spent. Ten to 15,000 on these seminars and mentorships and networking events and all of this stuff was the most important. That was more important than any property he's ever bought. Right. Because yeah. you're building that foundation and education and that knowledge. So you can come out here and really execute on your moves. Exactly. Let me ask you this, bro. What, mm-hmm. what's the what's what's the number one thing you took out of that book because i took so so many out of this out of this book bro i, I want to hear what yours is the number one thing i took out of the book maybe not the number one but one of the know. most important that stuck out to me um something that i uh actually besides money that i actually instilled in my life was the importance of knowing many different things, many different traits, not being single lane. Um, right. And I say that, I just say that. And oh, how he was saying, you know, um, like uh, one of the most important things you can learn is like people skills, networking skills, how to talk and whatnot. And I said that because um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely an introvert. I, mm-hmm. um, one of the best jobs I ever had in my life not even money wise, because it probably paid the least amount, but was Foot Locker. Working at Foot Locker was one of the best jobs I ever had in my life, because what it did was it, it made me vulnerable and uncomfortable. I have to approach people. I talk to somebody. Right. I have to do that. But the skills that I learned from working at Foot Locker made me so comfortable in networking and approaching both parties. You know what I'm saying? I'm learning like, I, I mean, I can I can mix and mingle with both sides. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, the, the 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 street side or the, you know more ethic there. side and then i can get busy in the corporate i mean i'm working in the corporate world te- i'm working with the corporate world technically um Bro. so definitely i would i would say that you know what i'm saying being multi-dimensional Bro. and being a people person that's big networking that's bro number one when i tell you so i got like i got, I got in this mentorship in march right mm-hmm. and there's i me personally when i was just thinking like and this is dumb of me. Like when I first started hosting, I'm like, man, nobody out here in DMV doing real estate. Blah blah. blah. I'm the only, like one of the only people out here. Blah blah blah. All this mm-hmm. and all that. I get into the mentorship. I find all these people that are not really doing it, but really doing it, bro. Mm-hmm. Like I talk to, to this dude every single day, bro. It's in my phone, I can give him a call right now. He'll answer the phone. Make a half a million a month. And you would and never know, because they not. You would never know. They not. You know what I mean. Know. That comes with that comes with the uh, realizing um, wealth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trying to build towards wealth. You know what yeah. I'm saying? When you rich, you show it. When you building right. towards wealth, what's there to show? Money ain't even real for real. No. You know what I'm Been saying? Already did all that. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's it. It gets old. But mm-hmm. one thing that I took from that book though, and it, it's kind of off. To- it's not really off topic, but it, it, it is, um, and it's kind of controversial. But it just really stuck to me, bro. They said school. Other than other like certain professions, um, but they say school teaches you how to be an entre- uh, uh, employee, right? School teaches you how to be an employee, not an entrepreneur. From kindergarten buy- to you know most college uh, courses, yeah. I teach you how to how to be be a boss, bro. I have a biology degree. I did do nothing with science, bro. Not not one thing, bro. I got my degree. They tried to offer me a dollar raise, bro, and I'm like, oh no. Nah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> we gotta figure this out <laughs> wow and biology is tough i yeah. remember i remember when like i remember when you was taking that shit i'm like damn bro like this is some difficult stuff you learned yeah. good lord um time too. <laughs> yeah yeah but no i mean yeah I, I i completely agree it does i mean 
And it's crazy because in the very like first page of Rich Dad Poor Dad, he talks about how he has two dads, one who's, you know, making however much a uh, multimillionaire, whatever, has his own businesses and whatnot. And then one who, you know, um, was a was a teacher, educated, educated and whatnot. So I knew off bucks that the one with the money, he said one dropped out at like what, eighth grade, middle school, high school <laughs> or something like that. I already uh-huh. knew the one with the money was the dropout. I already right. knew. And then right. once and I was like, okay, yeah, this book is talking my language. Um, but just to get back to real estate for a second, I want to ask you something. You have a team, you mentioned that you know you have someone on your team making the lead calls and whatnot. When it comes to entrepreneurship and uh yeah, entrepreneurship especially, um, how important is it to have a team? It's so important, bro. Or else you're gonna you're gonna go crazy, right? I, I'll put it in perspective this way, right? When I first when I was by myself. And I, I closed those first two deals. What happened after those two deals, what, why I couldn't keep getting more deals is because I was a one-man show, right? Mm-hmm. So I got the deal on the contract. I had to find a buyer. I had to call the title company, make sure the deal actually closed. And this is for both the deals, right? And these aren't, these, all these jobs can be done by somebody and these are like full-time jobs, right? right? So what happened was I stopped getting leads because I was doing the cold calling too. So I was doing my lead generation. I was doing the, you know, the, the closing the deal, the finding the buyer, everything, mm-hmm. right? So if I didn't, I, I didn't have a team, so it really slowed me down. So after I made that, that whatever I made, it took me, you know, another three months to get another deal because I had to get my pipeline back up. I had to get my pipeline back full and get, you know, a bunch of leads coming back in, right? So a lot of people don't un- understand. People think that this is like a, an overnight thing like you talk to you'll get in the phone with one person and you're ready to close the deal the same day right it don't work like that a lot of people need time to sell or they a lot of people be lying they don't or they're just not ready right so we we just got like i'm talking to people today that we brought in from leads back in january right we brought in as leads back in january and they're still not ready to sell yet so you know if we don't have a team there's no way that you're going to keep track of those, right? And still do everything else. And even having a team, like my, my responsibilities are a lot less, you know, there's a lot more targeted, right? My job right now is just close deals and make sure everything runs smoothly. Right. right. So I have a, I have a team. We have a, v, a virtual assistant in the Philippines who cold calls for eight hours a day, right? We have another one in Mexico who does nothing but lead follow-up. So the leads come in or the people that I haven't talked to in a couple months or maybe said, check back with me in 30 days or a couple of weeks, she calls them and sets another appointment on my calendar, right? And I'm, soon I'm going to be teaching her how to close deals herself so I can be totally out of the business. Right. Um, right. So I have two partners. Uh, one is he handles all dispositions. He finds all the buyers. He does all our JV stuff. So working with other wholesalers, bringing them in so we get some more free leads. Um, and then I have another partner who's more like a systems guy. He hires and he fires our VAs. He does the payroll, the IT, all that good stuff. Cause I'm not good at it. Right. It's all about finding somebody who's, who's better than you at, better at doing certain things than, than you are. Right. Um, cause I, the type of person I am, I'm going to try to do everything myself until, until I just can't. Right. Yeah. So it's only right that you bring in people that are smarter than you at certain things. And you're able to actually learn from them and teach them some other things and put people on in different positions and be able to, you know, succeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even one of the, uh, you know, how on Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he has like important quotes on the side of the pages. One of them was, um, oh man, as an investor, your team, or it's something like your team, your team is as important as your investment or as an investor, your team, you're nothing without your team. Just pretty much saying your team, like, yeah, you can be an investor and entrepreneur all you want there, but your team is the head of the, head of the yeah. snake. You know what I'm saying? For sure. For sure. So, so let me ask you this before we get up out of here. Um, whether it's from wholesaling or creative financing, which I personally like more because in the name, it, it, I mean, it makes sense. It draws me in more because the name really matches the actions of what's going on with it. Bro, um, we just touched the surface too. We ain't even get it really get into the. Weeds. I know it. I know it. Yeah, we're going. We're, we're, def- <laughs> we're going to double back for sure. Yeah, so let me yeah, ask sure. you, what's next? You know, life is all about relationships, like we said, and leveling up. 
know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Leveling up. So let me ask you with you, your brand, your team, everything y'all got going on, what's next? We're going big, bro. Like we're starting to about to get into some fixing and flipping. So no more just wholesaling and, and just passing everything on. Um, next deal that we come in, that's going to be a good fix and flip. We're going to go ahead and take that on ourselves. Um, we're going to get a lot of rental properties, a lot of Airbnbs. Um, and I'll tell you my end goal, my, my end game is, is apartment buildings, big apartment buildings. So yeah, 100 plus, 200 plus units, you know? Um, so that, that's, that's what, what we're striving for. Um, you know, just getting, just getting as much pit money, helping as many people as possible and just, you know, providing that, that affordable housing to the community. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I always tell people too, when you, when you getting into this, don't go in it just looking for, for the money. Right. Cause if yeah. you're going there looking for, for how many deals you're going to close or how much, how much you're going to make every month, you're not going, you're not going to succeed. Right. Cause you focus on the wrong things. This is a real problem solving business. Like you're talking to people who are going through some real life shit, bro. Yeah. Like family members passed, like, sicknesses everything bro you like you you name it i i heard it on the phone mm. right so it's all about being a problem solver and and filling your brain with a bunch of tools that can that can solve these problems um so that that's all i'm, I'm trying to master my craft get come the best real estate investor i can be and just really really run it up bro take it over that's what's up, man. Are you doing seminars at all, like online seminars or anything? I know that you uh, do be you do be dropping some gems on IG with yeah. your uh, IG TV videos or posts or things that you add to your story and whatnot. But have you done like um, you know, any type of do you, so? You, do you go IG live? Uh, that's that's one thing on we're about to start doing. I'm about to get hit hit real heavy on content going IG live. Um, really just getting this information out there, right? Because right. I feel right. like like it's. It's my job almost to to put other people on, right? Because mm-hmm. I really wish that that somebody was was able to put me on, right? I learned everything from YouTube um, until I paid for this mentorship. I would like to, you know, give back and just spread the word, you know, spread this information to that that's been hidden from our people. Absolutely. Um, um if you're watching, you see that his IG is tagged underneath his picture. And for those listening, uh, his IG is D A R Y L L E L L. I S O N again, that is D A R Y L L E I L I S O N on I G. You would drop my phone number in there too, bro. If you lay it on him, he needs help with any deals. Everybody wants to get into real estate, hit my line. You know, I'm always good. If I'm not talking to somebody, I'm, I'm good to talk um, and point you in the right direction for real. I like it. All right, so we could drop your phone number. Phone number is 484-769-3951. Again, that's 484-769-3951. His name is Daryl. Go ahead and send him a text. Like I said, people, I mean, as y'all can tell, you know what I'm saying? He's dropping gems. And I mean, when I asked what's next, I wasn't, you know, asking, I wasn't asking uh, an insinuation. I was literally asking what is about to happen, what is going to happen, what is destined to happen. Because like we said before, we don't drown. We jump into that deep end for a reason. We force ourselves to swim. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Well, listen, man, Um, that's all the time we got for now. We'll definitely double back in because I, I was paying attention. You dropped three out of the seven exit strategies. Right. Yeah, so we're going to... Seven, right. Yeah, you dropped three of them. So we're going to come back for the other four. We definitely double back in on this one. We just kind of reeling them in with this one. Um. Mm-hmm. But for all the listeners out there, whether you are watching on YouTube or listening to your respected podcast platform, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Day by Day Podcast is everywhere. I want you all to do me a favor and go ahead and follow, subscribe and like so you are kept to date on all the latest episodes. A special thank you again to my special guest, Daryl, the real estate investor for dropping by and dropping gems on us all. I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate you, brother. Absolutely. We're going double back. Well, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Day by Day Podcast. I'm your host, Day Day, and I will catch you on the next episode. Peace. Yes, sir.